Hi everyone and welcome to the All Things ITSM Global Podcast. We're coming to you from ITSM 15 in London. I'm Kirsty McGowan, I'm here with Pat Bolton. Hi. Simone Moore. Hi. And we're speaking with David Beckham from the board of ITSMF UK. That's right. Hi David, nice Hello. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you Kirsty. David, yes. you've been on the board of the ITSMF now for what, all of six weeks? Yes, six weeks, yeah. since the end of September when mm. I was elected. Um, I'm. Uh, elected to represent the individual members and the members of the small uh, business, the Enterprise 10 uh, community. So uh, um, my, uh, my intention is to get to meet as many of those people that have elected me as possible and say thank you, um, but also to find out um, what they want from the ITSMF uh, in the UK and uh, to be able to represent their views to the board. Right, okay, so, so how, how do these people kind of engage with the ITMS? How have they done it previously? And what um, are you looking to do now? Obviously, I've um, been a regional chairman for yeah. a while and uh, have met quite a lot of the members in my region in the Midlands. Um, but obviously now I'm part of a, you know, the actual national mm. board. Um, so the, the way I would um, obviously encourage people to engage with me is to use my uh, email address of david.backham at itsmf.co.uk um, and to seek their views. So if they have any um, ideas about what we should be doing as a board to uh, develop the ITSMF to make their membership uh, more valuable to them, what kind of things would they like us to be doing, um, then that input, um, if you like, that research, market research from the field, will allow me to sit on the board and take to board meetings suggestions and ideas um, as to what we can provide for them as members. And also, um, obviously as a board member, I will be putting papers into the board for discussion um, for some of the things that we can be doing in the future. So this is the first time you've actually been on a board. Yes. Apart so what was that little journey like and yeah, how does it feel for you? It, it feels like I've really s sort of stepped up to um, a position of responsibility and leadership and it's kind of a, a bit nerve-wracking to be in that position. Um, I am so um, desirous to really serve in my position on the board um, you know, properly and with integrity and to make sure that um, everything that I do is for the people that elected me. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really quite know what to expect um, other than um, to be able to make a contribution. And so for me that's probably the first, uh, the first thing that's important to do um, so that I'm not just a, a passive member mm -hmm. of the board but that I can um, bring the views of the membership to, to the board mm -hmm. for discussion. Um, and at the same time, you know, it's a great opportunity for me. I've been a member of uh, ITSMF since 2000, so I've been around the organisation for a number of years as both a member and as both, um, you know, a member of um, a regional group. And uh, you know, I've been to conference before and I've given talks and uh, uh, presentations. So I, I know what it's like to be um, part of the community. Mm -hmm. Um, but actually to be a leader within that community, mm -hmm. that's, that's going to be my, uh, my biggest challenge, I think. And so as you said, you're, look, you're looking after the interests of the individual members and the smaller organisations. So how do you see their interests and requirements differing from the larger organisations? Well, obviously, um, the larger organisations are the ones that really, I think, bring the financial capabilities to the mm -hmm. organisation. Yes. So if we didn't have um, big sponsors, yeah. Um, at events like the conference, we wouldn't be able to stage such a good conference. Mm. But I think what the members really, the individual members certainly, and the small businesses, they, um, I think, want the opportunity to gain something from participation within the larger community. Right. So they're looking for opportunities to learn, to see best practice mm. that's been um, offered from uh, other people who are here giving right. talks. Certainly when I uh, joined the organisation, being part of a community of practitioners right, was sure. was extremely important yes. to me. Um, I would like to think that uh, we are still, as an organisation, giving people the opportunity to share their best practice with um, the members of the organisation mm -hmm. because I think the, uh, the ability to share things that work with other people is uh, one of the reasons that we have things like conferences and you know a user community to get together mm -hmm. um, to learn from each other. Um, but at the same time, when we get together, 
as you, as you probably appreciate. Mm -hmm. People come from diverse backgrounds and experiences and different uh, organisations and they all have something to add and when you put lots of ideas in a melting pot you never know quite what's going to come out. So I see that as being key for innovation for the future as well. So not just what's good now that we can learn but actually just through getting together and having a couple of beers in the bar um, and yeah. discussing ideas you don't know what might be created as a result most, of that. Most of the work at conference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, just, just picking up on it, because one of the things that I have participated in probably since it started mm. was the service transition group. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of members don't really realise that the level of activity that goes on within those groups. And, and mm. what I also think is there is quite a few of the volunteers within those groups, and it kind of tends to be the same group of people. So one of the things that I would like, really like to see is an effort to get some new blood into some of the yeah. things yeah. and things like that, new one, ideas. One of the things that I feel very strongly about is that if you are a member of the organisation, if you signed up to join the, the organisation, you'll get no benefit at all yeah. unless you participate. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I have, um, over the years, got so much out of the regional meetings mm -hmm. as well, which you know they perhaps don't happen that often. Um, unless you're in a, a, an area that's, that's very active, but certainly in the Midlands we find it very difficult to run events on a regular enough basis mm. to give people the opportunity to get together. And the Midlands region geographically is so large as well that you know, if we have a meeting in the east of England, then the people from the Midlands don't come. And if we have a meeting in the yeah. Midlands, the people <laughs> from the east of England don't come. Mm. So it's, it's very difficult because of the journey uh, and the travelling um, in, in the UK mm. to get people to actually come together. Um, but through those events, you actually can share practice with other people and learn from other people um, in, in areas of interest. And uh, you know, I, I've learned a lot over the years just from sitting down in those meetings yeah. and hearing other people's presentations. Yeah, and I think that, that's a really valuable thing for people to remember it is, is that no matter what sort of value mm. ITSMF UK tries to provide mm. to its members, mm. if you don't actually actively participate mm. Mm. You're, you're not going to get, you won't ever achieve, achieve that value. So Has that been a history or is that shift changing? Like are people too passive I, and I, just waiting for the information mm. to come to them? I, I don't believe so, but I do believe that the pressures in the working place, the workplace mm. is a lot... Overriding. Is a that. lot yes. overriding. So okay. getting time off to go to an ITSMF event yeah. may it's be difficult so because mm. the, the pressures of work um, Very few yeah. IT organisations are overstaffed. At <laughs> yeah, yeah. Less, yeah. that's one of the big problems. Um, but again, it's like, okay, you take a membership at the gym because you want to get fit, yes. but if you don't go to the gym, mm. you You're won't not get, going get fit. fit. Yeah, just and having that membership is you know, not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. And, ha and having a membership in a library, you yes. know there's plenty of knowledge in, in the books yes. that you can mm. get, but if you don't actually go to the library and get the books out and read them, mm. yeah. you won't acquire that knowledge. Exactly. So yeah. I, I do believe that being part of this community um, gives you the opportunity to get training which mm. is relevant because other organisations are obviously using mm. the practices mm. that the people who are talking about have. So it's, if you like, you don't have to pay to go on a training course, you've got access to learning from your peers in the industry yes. um, and I think that's a channel that um, people don't necessarily really take yep. a, as much advantage of as they could mm -hmm. and no. uh, you know if your training budget's been cut this is another way I do think we can do a little bit more to make it more accessible mm -hmm. one of the things we were talking about so I attend fairly uh, regular bridge, uh, meetings with the service transition mm -hmm. group and one of the things we talked about was actually making the meetings like a Google Hangout mm. or a podcast yeah, or something yes. along those lines. So that yeah. everyone can participate. So exactly. uh, yeah. so that, and it doesn't take much to mm. actually no. do that no. and then share it. Yeah, mm. so. and certainly um, I think one of the things Rosemary said in the keynote this morning was very much we must engage with the technology. Yeah. We must be able yes. to reach out to the members and not necessarily mm. require the members to keep coming to us. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we need to make yeah. it make And we it, work in an IT available. space. We need to make use of the, yeah, of the tools that we expect our customers to yeah, use. Exactly. I, I must admit, I'm very comfortable in service mm. management because I don't know the technology yeah. side of IT. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm people and process yes. and not the yeah. technology. Mm. And I do struggle struggle with the technology. Um, I struggle even with things like Google Hangout, but I think I'm of a generation that kind of doesn't get it. Mm. But I certainly, for the new membership, the people we want to come in and, 
uh, invigorate uh, yeah. the if organization. You want, yeah. Do you know, once you've actually gotten over that little hurdle, because yeah. if they're not really that difficult, you won't get off it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, as I say, as I say, I, I have struggled. I have struggled to get on it, which yeah. means that you know being engaged in that space has been difficult for yeah. me. Um, but the conversations are amazing once you're there. Oh, yeah. absolutely. But it's a space that that has to be opened up if you we want have, to attract to the next generation yeah, of, we of have service to management do that. professionals. If you if you don't start engaging in that space. They're going to find someone else who will. Exactly. Mm. And of course, that's why we're pleased that you yes. guys are here. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. you know how this works yeah. and you can help yeah. us. No, we have, we, we've had some really great conversations here, here today, and I'm sure we're going to have some more this afternoon. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Yeah. So, thank you very much for your time. It's been a, a pleasure chatting with you, and good luck. Thank you very much. For your tenure on the board. Thank you. <laughs>